Even if you're just starting out on YouTube, you've probably heard a lot of jokes about how terrible the comments are. That the comments are a cesspit, that only terrible things ever get said there, that only terrible people would ever go there, and that you probably shouldn't read them. And those statements are not without merit. When I was at Channel Frederator and I was a host there and we were getting pretty big and we were getting pretty popular, I would joke that I hadn't made it yet because I hadn't gotten my first death threat yet. And then about a week after I started really like making that joke, I got my first death threat, so art imitates life? No, life imitates art. It's that way this time. And to be fair, when I got that death threat, I did say out loud that I had finally made it. Because of this reputation, people just don't bother with comments a lot of the times. They don't turn them on, they don't enable them, just don't even deal with it. And if you're a kid's channel, you don't have comments. And because of this reputation, and because a lot of people already don't use them, there are a number of clients who will ask us, like, look, is this even worth it? Should we even bother with doing things like comments in the community tab? Do they have any merit at all? And they do, and I figure it's probably worth talking about. So let's get into it. Before we get into it, though, let's talk about today's sponsor, which was sent to us in a 3D stereogram. Do we want to give people a chance to solve this? I'll, I'll take a screenshot. We can put it up on screen. It's us. The sponsor is us. From what I understand, we're working on copy, and then at one point I'll read that copy, but so far nobody has told me to stop introing ourselves this way. So I want to talk to you briefly about Monster Thumbnails. Monster Thumbnails is our service dedicated just to thumbnails. So if you are a creator and you have great videos and you do not want to spend time making the thumbnails, Monster Thumbnails might be right for you. We have a team of talented graphic designers and they're led by one of our strategists and they've all worked in the YouTube space. And together they are really great at putting together thumbnails. We have a bunch of different package sizes for a bunch of different types of creators. So if you understand that thumbnails Thumbnails are really important, but you don't want to make them personally, that's totally fine. Go to monsterthumbnails.com. They can hook you up. And as somebody who has made thumbnails literally in PowerPoint, uh, that's valuable. That's pretty valuable. But anyway, on to talking about comments in the community tab. If you are just starting out on YouTube and you're worried about a community and you're worried about how terrible the comments might be, I have some really good news for you. They probably won't be bad for you. Awful, awful comments and trolling in general are generally a performative act, which means that you want an audience when you're being terrible. And because you want an audience when you're being terrible, channels that have just started out don't make great candidates for trolling. Like you can make a super incendiary comment on a channel with a hundred or a thousand subscribers, but it's not gonna see much play, so where's the fun in that? When you're hearing about really terrible comments, it's usually coming from really large channels that are getting thousands and thousands of comments in the first two hours of a video. Which, I mean, is pretty nice because that means you're getting thousands and thousands of views in the first few hours, but it's generally not happening to you when you're just starting out out of the gate. Which means that when you're starting out, you have a really good chance to foster a good, welcoming community that isn't going to be terrible to each other. So the comment sections and community posts won't be terrible for you, but that doesn't really answer the question, do they have any merit at all? And they do. Comments can foster a sense of community. Your fans can start to interact with each other and kind of engage in a fun way. That tends to be a really ephemeral value, but it does have merit. Like if you have a channel that you like that has a really good community, it can be a lot of fun to see what other people are saying. I bring this channel up a bunch, but for me that's Yellis Marvel's run. And when Marbula 1's going and different teams are doing well in the standings, it's really fun to see how fans of different teams are reacting and their elation and their tragedy. This is the point in the video where I would say that I'm sorry to fans of the Savage Speeders, uh, but I'm not sorry. Y'all had enough. Look, some of us are Thunderbolt fans, okay? Like, let us have this. As well, if you as a creator actively foster the community there, it lets you know that your fans are valued. So if you're there and you're participating and you're liking posts and you're responding to comments, people see that as being appreciated and people like to be appreciated. It helps you feel cared about and if you care about your audience, it's good to let them know that you care about them. If somebody's totally new to a channel and they're coming and visiting for the first time, seeing an active comment section that's also full of people that are being pretty decent to each other, that helps you think like, wow, this is maybe a channel that I wanna stick around with and check out more because these people clearly seem to like it. From an analytics perspective, comments and community posts count as engagement, which it's not the strongest form of engagement, but it does show the your audience is actively participating. They're not just passive eyeballs. It is totally worth something when you have engagement when you're just starting out though. 
It's probably not where you're focusing your attention. You're gonna be focused on having people watch more videos. You're gonna be focused on having people subscribe. And finally, you can also use community posts and comments to solicit feedback, which can be very, very helpful. If you monitor comments over time, you can start to get a sense of like, hey, my audience really responds to this, or they really feel this way. And you can start to build up sentiments and respond to those and change how you do your videos. A very concrete example of this is at Frederator, uh, while we were taking off, we had a very bad tripod that the height could couldn't adjust and I was too tall for it when standing but too short for it when sitting and we hatched the brilliant plan to have me kneel on an office chair which is a demonstrative thing you'll notice if you kneel in an office chair that you are not totally stable I've gotten pretty good at it because I've done like 20 videos this way and this office chair is uniquely stable. But you got a little swivel going on, which means you're engaging your core a little bit to stay steady. And because we were doing that, there's a lot of videos where when I'm on camera, I am twitching pretty violently. And one of the ways that we found out that this was a problem is because a lot of people in the comments were concerned that I had cerebral palsy. And then there were a couple of other people that said I had other things that looking up the symptoms of them, I think they were confusing with cerebral palsy. So that was a thing. So in summary, you have to be careful with how you employ that feedback, but that feedback can have real value. Another benefit of fostering these strong communities that exist particularly in community posts is that it gives you something that you can do and use to engage with your fans on days where you don't upload. So if you have three uploads that you do in a week, that gives you four days where you're not doing anything. And if you take some of those days and put a community post on it, say you ask a question, you can engage with your fans and kind of remind them that you're there and that you're active on the platform without needing to create a whole nother video, which is pretty cool. So there are merits to a comment section and there are merits to fostering a strong community. So how do we do that? You should be participating in your own comment section, provided that you are going with having a comment section. If somebody makes a very salient point, go ahead and click the heart button. Let them know that you saw it and that you appreciated it. If it's a question or something that you can actually follow up on, reply to it. Like if somebody comments and they say, hey, I really like your shirt, where did you get your shirt? If you remember where you got the shirt, go ahead and tell them like if you have the time to respond because it's just like a way of saying like, hey, you're my audience and I appreciate you. And also we share good taste in clothing. Before somebody asks, because like I know how people in comments work and you do something like this and then everyone will ask it. Uh, I don't think this shirt is commercially available at the moment. Um, these were like internal company shirts. Uh, so that's where I got my shirt from the office. So now if you ask it in the comments, I'll think you started typing a comment before you finished watching the video and I caught you. Neither of us gets any points for that. If you have a really big channel, you'll probably put some time cap on this. Like you'll respond for like the first hour or a day, but things will become very quickly overwhelming. You can't read all of them. If you're a channel that's just starting out, things will actually come in probably slow enough that you can just manage them over time. Like you'll see in your notifications app, you'll see like one or two new comments and you can see if there's things that you can and should respond to. It's actually one of the greatest perks about when you're just starting out is that like your notifications are totally manageable and obviously you want to move past that point but do savor that part of it while you can. The other thing that you can do to help foster a strong community is to guide the conversation. So you're probably familiar with this but let's say a video is talking about ice cream flavors. You'd hear something like what are your thoughts? Let me know what your favorite ice cream flavor is and then people in the comments will be like butter pecan and then another person will be like butter pecan because butter pecan is the only real answer. You're gonna get good advice for beginners on YouTube and truth to power about ice cream. It doesn't have to be that exactly related or exactly put together in that format, but if you spend some time in your video guiding a comment discussion and then especially responding to comments that follow that discussion, you can help solidify the community around like a single idea so that it's creating comments around that and it helps encourage responses to each other. So in the ice cream example, if somebody says cookie dough and somebody says butter pecan, you can get this fun sense of like how many people kind of roughly agree with me. I can get like a quick straw poll or you can talk about why butter pecans better in the comments with somebody who doesn't agree. Comments are often treated as a free for all and they sort of are a free for all, but if you spend some time in your video putting together like a prompt or something, 
you can help influence it. As a beginner, you probably don't wanna spend like a whole lot of time doing this. Like you'll see really, really popular people that'll do it a lot. Like they'll do it like three or four times a video. You definitely don't need to do that. You don't actually have to do it at all, but if you want to guide discussion on a particular video, quick 10 seconds somewhere in the middle is probably the way to go. So that kind of talks about fostering communities in the comment section, but what about the community tab? where it actually has community in the name of what it is. So when a lot of people are just starting out, they look at the community tab and they go, oh, awesome, we have this community tab, I can use it to communicate with my community, and I'm gonna tell them about my video that just came out, which doesn't work. And the community tab is not really for that, and it doesn't really work as that. We've seen people try a lot of different ways. We haven't seen anyone able to generate significant viewership off linking their videos in the community tab. Like it just, doesn't inspire any kind of engagement there at all. Haven't really seen use for it. Again though, it can be used to foster a community and make sure that people remember that you're there on days when you don't upload, which makes it pretty valuable as a tool. If you're wanting to foster a community and you're wanting to keep yourself top of mind to your fans, the good news is, is there is a really simple list of principles to keep in mind. And if you have that, you have a pretty good community tab. First off, YouTube is a visual medium and that is true even in the community tab. So you will see that we use a lot of images and especially GIFs. GIFs are super helpful, one, because they just make a post more interesting and a little bit more fun. And also if you're scrolling around on the home page, it's kind of helpful to have like an image popping off, like in the same way that a thumbnail does, whereas text is just kind of a little bit weak. You will see, however, that there is text with a lot of these images. And a lot of the time, it is a question. If you just say some random thing on the community tab, it's hard for people to like do anything with that. But if you ask a question, that's interesting because now you're saying, hey, I as the creator actually care about your opinion and I wanna hear it, so let's hear it. Prompts a lot more response, prompts a lot more interest. And this is actually a good way to like solicit audience feedback from your core fans. So while you do wanna take it with a certain amount of salt, you can say things like, hey, what should I make next? And get responses from the people who are most interested in your stuff. And that has legitimate value. Depending on the question, you can also ask it in the form of a poll where people can vote on answers, which again, if you're doing like a community participation thing, that can be really valuable. If you're like, should I make a video about X or Y, you can get like a numerical opinion and that's pretty cool. Basically, if you just tell people, go check out my video, doesn't do a whole lot. But if you give them something to engage with, they will engage with it. And it helps give like a better feeling to the community tab, right? Like if all I do with the community tab is say, hey, go check out my videos, it basically starts to feel like a marketing arm and it is, but if you make it a little more bespoke and you make it a little bit more fun, like it has value to the viewer and not just to you. And a lot of your viewers will appreciate that. So from like a totally beginner perspective, that gives us like a sense of the philosophy of how we use comments and how we use the community tab and how we foster a good community. But as your channel grows, there will be a time where you have to actually moderate. And how should you do that? Like if you're starting to get comments, eventually you're going to find a terrible comment. And how how should you react to it? How should you respond to it? Is there anything you should be doing on your channel to help it not be terrible? And yes, there is. So first off, if you go over to the studio and you go into the settings, you'll see this tab for community. And there are a number of things you can do. Moderators and approved users probably isn't going to matter much to a small community. As you get bigger, these things might become relevant. Something else that you'll wanna probably come over here and see is your defaults. This is where you can go to allow all comments or disable comments or hold comments for review. Uh, just to go through them really quick, Allow all comments, exactly what it says. Disable comments, exactly what it says. Holding all comments for reviews means that people can submit comments and they will go to your notifications and then you individually approve them to allow them onto the channel. This can be time consuming. If you are totally new and you're not getting a lot of comments, this is still pretty manageable. Most people don't bother with this because it becomes an administrative hassle. Hold potentially inappropriate comments for review is YouTube using kind of auto filters, right? Like if somebody says a slur or says something that's pretty obviously spam, it's going to get held. You can see it. And if you make a judgment, you can allow it onto your channel but it does a little bit of the moderation for you already. In addition to that, you can set up your own automated filters. So if there's words that you specifically don't want to allow beyond like typical slurs, which generally happen automatically, you can put them here. You can block links if you don't want people linking to URLs. Most of the time, this isn't an issue, not really worth it. The other thing you will see, and we will blur this out so that they're not specific, but you'll see this thing for hidden users, 
which is when you see an abusive comment, you can hide a user from the channel, which means their comments will never show up on your video. They will not be notified of this. They still feel like they can comment, but it will not show up to anyone else. As your channel grows and as you have to moderate, we generally recommend extremely liberal use of this feature. If people are saying terrible things, just get them out. Don't make a big deal about it. Don't get into a fight with them, just get them out. If somebody says something terrible, they're gone. It's not a three strike policy. You don't want that. Especially as a beginner with like a small community, if you allow that to fester right at the start, it will affect your community way down the line. When you're just starting out, you hopefully won't need to use this a ton, but it's a totally valid thing to do and we definitely encourage liberal use of it. So go forth and shadow ban. For the record, you can just do it from this screen. You can go to the channel of the person you want to hide and you can just paste it in here. Let's go to a video and show it there as well. When it comes to hiding users, you can also do it from the channel. Uh, I'm just showing this as an example. You click the dots here. This is actually a very lovely comment. That's very nice. I would not hide this user, but you can do it down here. Real simple, real intuitive. Don't do it like willy nilly, but also don't freak out about it too much. Like somebody doesn't need to cross the line into actual slurs. Like if somebody is just being an unpleasant jerk, you can hide them. It's fair game. And it's something that you probably want to do because we do talk about these things from like an engagement perspective and like, hey, you want to keep yourself top of mind. And that's why we do community posts. And we like to see comments because it drives engagement. And that is all true, but it is also true that there's a, a warm fuzziness to this where it's like, hey, your videos and your channel are gonna feel a lot better if the people in the comments are having a good time and you're making a good time for them. Comments and community posts do drive engagement and that has algorithmic value. Comments and the community posts can also just make your channel feel more fun and more welcoming and that has value too. But you do have to spend some time to make it work. When you're just starting out, that should be pretty simple. It should be pretty easy. And as you grow over time, that can become a little bit more difficult. It can become a little bit harder to manage but if you use the tools in place and you use them liberally, you can actually have a comment section that is pretty darn good. And with that, you as a beginner know everything you need to know about the comment section and the community tab. Thank you so much for watching. We have a bunch of other videos on audience development over here that you can check out. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like to let us know that you liked it. It tells us what you want to see more of. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Little Monster for more videos on audience development every week. See you next time. I felt so pro here. This this was how I did it. I probably shouldn't go out on that, but I you know what? We'll just set it there. Bye.